Hello, this is Tom from Never Center, and in this video I'm going to show you our re latest release of Silo, which is 2024.1. And this release focuses on um, UVs, UV layouts, and in particular, um, this new Auto UVs modifier that we've made. And uh, what this does, as you can uh, imagine from the name, is that it automatically applies and updates a UV layout on whatever model it's applied to um, according to the projection mode and these various options and I'll show you how these things work here. So on this model I've just got this sort of basic house thing and if I toggle off the modifiers I've got that set to my forward slash button that I can toggle them on and off. You can see this is the base model with uh, not good UV maps and uh, it has no depth to the walls but we have a shell modifier on to give it that depth automatically and then this auto UVs to apply using the planar regions um, layout method to automatically generate UVs for this but as a modifier um, now as I work on this model and do things like you know move or extrude or whatever the UVs will be updated in real time while I'm modeling uh, whoops, let's do a cut here and maybe raise a roof. And you can see um, with this planar regions algorithm, it's really nice. Like it makes sure that the, um, that the map doesn't get stretched at all uh, when you're modeling. So you can do whatever and it will, um, it will uh, stretch it or stop it from stretching and scale it properly so that you know everywhere that this material appears like these tiles will be the same size regardless of what I do on this model um, and you can do all kinds of funky things and it can be really handy for you know making weird roof situations or whatever and you just need the um, the the roof shingles to um, update properly or whatever um, anyway um, I'll show you a few different models and how this works this can be really handy, again, like if you're doing an architectural model and say, um, here, let me go to this other model I've got. Um, this one's like a, a sci-fi tower kind of thing. If you've got a model where you're just going to want mostly a, um, a repeating material texture, then this is a great candidate for that kind of thing. So if I toggle it off, you can see it doesn't really have UVs on. They look quite nice. Um, and this planar regions algorithm, this has been updated. So this is doing a few things that it didn't used to do. One is that it's um, if you've got orient to world turned on, then it will basically always make the bottom of the texture map align as best it can with the world down, the negative y axis. So um, you'll note as like, uh, if I make this, this region more slanty, um, once I get above even, it flips so that the, the bottom of the texture map is pointing towards the world down. And, uh, you know, that's really nice for things like bricks or other materials that you might have that have an orientation that they would show up in in the real world. Um, so anyway, that's handy. Uh, like I say, there's this scale to world check mark. If this is unchecked, <clears throat> then the texture map is basically bound to UV region zero to one. And so that's why you can't see anything because this is a big model and each of these has just a tiny portion of the UV map. But if I have scaled the world on, then um, it's, it's scaling it to the world and it allows the UVs to go out of the bounds of that. And moreover, if I like scale the whole model, you can see the, the relative size of that material on the model is staying the same and so um, so if you've got a material and you've got a certain size you want it to be you can apply that you can adjust the whole scale for it so I can tweak the scale here and then say I decide this is what I want the size of each of these tiles to be in the real world situation and then when I scale my model up and down they'll stay that same size so um, like I say there are um, a few different modes, projection modes, uh, and they're based on the projection modes that would usually show up um, in this recreate UVs. 
and they're not all there. Um, LSCM is one that we're going to add in the future, um, just based on the seams that you mark on the model, but that's not in there yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. But this planar regions one uh, works great. Per face, just uh, you know, treats each face totally individually. Uh, the planar regions one, um, it will make it if two polygons are coplanar, then it will group them together and the texture will go seamlessly across those. But when we've got it on the per face method, it just does it per face. And you can see often it'll, it'll align it with um, whatever edge it chooses first in each face. And so they can end up being oriented all different ways. Um, there's cubic projection. Um, and there's cylindrical and there is spherical and the cylindrical and spherical ones are not going to be great on your architectural or mechanical models but there are other uh, places where they can be handy um anyway uh again with the uh the planar regions one is is kind of uh the most handy one for this probably when you're doing mechanical or architectural models like i say that have just a, a material that goes around them um let me show one more model with this uh this one's kind of fun just like a little tower and this has similar modifiers as that first one that i showed it's got this is with the modifiers turned off this is with them turned on both the uh, roof and the uh, the uh, walls of this tower have a shell modifier and an auto uvs modifier but um, like if I come up to the roof and I um, select all these edges around it and I cut. Now as I move this up and down, you can see it, it will sort of, it's like a, it does a really good um, shingle job. It's a good roofer. And it makes sure, again, that they're all always oriented towards uh, towards world down when I've got that orient to world on there and regardless of what I do here it will just keep these shingles looking nice and give this sort of a minaret look or whatever a wood shingled minaret um, if I come down here to the tower I can do similar things um, let's select the uh, ring of edges and cut them and can move this up or down you can see when i scale it it's doing all that nicely um, i can make another window in here and again this is this is really a flat object there's no depth to the walls of this tower other than with the modifier so i can do things like just extrude a new face and scale that down maybe make it tall and skinny and then just delete it and it's got depth to the walls and it's got nice uh, UV mapping with this stone and it can be a really quick uh, easy way to just you know bang out a model and maybe what you'll do you know with something like this uh, if I go look at the UVs the UVs that it's showing here are not the the UVs applied by the modifier these are the UVs on the model if the modifier is not applied. Um, but if I want to use these UVs and tweak them, I can always come in here and bake the modifiers and then it will show me what I've got here. And this has them all overlapping, but then you can do something like come into the UVs menu, arrange them in bounds, and then scale it up and get it to a scale that you want. And then you've got, you know, a nice sort of set of things to work with and then you can tweak them however you want beyond that point. So um, it's good for, like I say, some models it'll be good start to finish, some models as a good starting point and just lets you tweak things in real time. But it can be really nice just modeling with UVs updating applied so that as you're you know building out your tower or whatever, um, it feels like a tower while you're doing it. And sometimes that can be inspiration for, um, for making better art. So we hope that you'll love it and that you'll send us feedback. And uh, we look forward to expanding this some more. Thanks.